Today, we become legends. So one of the most heavily requested gods for an episode of Smite Science is Atlas, and he has a lot to explore in terms of real world equivalents and how strong he would actually be. He can fire gamma ray bursts, pick up the world slash the entire cosmos and control gravity itself. Let's explore that on episode 4 of Smite Science. So first up, let's cover how Atlas holds up the astrolabe and what that entails for his overall strength. So there's a few ways we can go here to calculate a weight for the astrolabe and we'll start with the most modest estimation using in-game measurements and assuming the astrolabe is simply made of interstellar space matter. So taking in-game measurements using the minion ruler, we can get the astrolabe to be 1.32 meters in diameter. This is using minions as 1.8 meters tall as they are meant to be humans in the smite world and we can use a ratio of minion height to the height of what we want to measure and calculate dimensions for nearly anything in the game. More info on this in my first episode of Smite Science on Hercules if you want that, but anyway, the astrolabe is 73% as tall as a minion, which at 1.8 meters gives us the 1.32 meter diameter. From this we can calculate volume as 4 thirds pi r cubed, which using a radius of 0.66 meters gives us 1.2 cubic meters of interstellar space that Atlas is holding. Now, as most of you probably know, there isn't much matter out in space. In fact, the density of interstellar space depends a lot on factors like temperature and pressure, but the average is around 1 atom per cubic centimetre. This is in contrast to air at sea level that has around 10 million trillion atoms per cubic centimetre. At 1.2 million cubic centimetres, the equivalent of 1.2 cubic metres, that means our boy's astrolabe consists of just 1.2 million atoms. Assuming these atoms are just hydrogen, which the vast majority of interstellar space atoms are, each one weighs 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, and so in total, the astrolabe itself weighs 1.99 times 10 to the minus 18 grams. That's 1.99 trillionths of a trillionth of a gram. Atlas needs to be hitting the gym more if he struggles to carry that burden on his shoulders. Of course, that's just the inner astrolabe itself and not the metal housing that encases it, which would weigh trillions of trillions of times more than the actual astrolabe itself, assuming the astrolabe consists of interstellar space, which is my best guess based on its appearance in-game. However, if we go more by the law, Atlas is said to hold up the heavens, not just a part of interstellar space. While it's impossible to scientifically estimate the weight of the heavens, it's said in his law that some say he holds the totality of existence itself on his shoulders. In which case, the astrolabe would weigh the entire weight of the universe. Now, to get the weight of the universe, we can't just put it on a weighing scale, and this is all extremely theoretical and uses a lot of assumptions, which involve basically extrapolating the density of an average galaxy to the size of the observable universe. But consensus estimates at the moment are 1 times 10 to the 53 kilograms, that's 1 with 53 zeros after it. This kind of weight condensed down to 1.2 cubic meters will create the most powerful black hole in existence and likely destroy all of creation itself, but hey, the astrolabe does pull you into it in smite, right? Let's talk about that. Since force supplied by gravity is equal to the mass of the object, times your mass divided by the distance between them, multiplied by the gravitational constant, we can plug in our numbers and see that when Atlas uses gravity pull on a deployed astrolabe, a force of 1.53 times 10 to the 43 newtons is applied to the god in question. That is an unfathomably large force that would almost certainly tear you asunder within milliseconds of being exposed to it. The fact that Atlas can launch this incredible weight straight from his arm proves he has to be one of if not the strongest god in smite when translated to the real world like this. Assuming his description of holding the entirety of existence on his shoulder is true, that is. However, power isn't always just raw strength and another way Atlas brings power to the battlefield is through his Gamma Ray Burst Ultimate. From Wikipedia, quote, Gamma Ray Bursts are the most energetic and luminous electromagnetic events since the Big Bang. So they've got to be packing some serious heat when you launch one at someone in might, right? Gamma ray bursts in the real world are most often released during a supernova of a high mass star that implodes to form a neutron star or black hole, and they are said to release energy in a matter of a few seconds that is equivalent to the energy our sun will dissipate in its entire 10 billion year lifespan. That translates roughly to 10 to the 44 joules of energy release in a typical gamma ray burst. For reference, if you converted the entire mass of the earth directly to energy with no loss using E equals mc squared, you would get 5.5 times 10 to the 41 joules, 1000 times less. So when Atlas ults you in smite, he is essentially converting 1000 Earths directly to energy using Einstein's equation and launching it at you in a concentrated beam. 
For a more easier to comprehend reference point, the Saar Bomba, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated by our species, released a total of 210,000 terajoules of energy, aka 2.1 times 10 to the 17 joules. So in simpler terms, when Atlas launches his ult at you in Smite, he is concentrating the energy of 480 trillion trillion nuclear bombs in a beam directly at your face. Hi Rez, to preserve the lore accuracy, I'm afraid you must make Atlas ult a 100% health execute in the next patch. But that's all I got for this episode of Smite Science. If you have other gods or mechanics you want me to explore the real world equivalents to, then let me know down below and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.